Here we are. So welcome to the uh, full moon in Taurus. Um, and it's really a lunar eclipse and it's opposing uh, the sun in Scorpio. I'm just actually turning up my volume here. There we are. Um, I'm not going to go too much into um, I'm just going to share my screen here. There we are. Ah, there we are. So uh, I just wanted to bring a little bit of a, um, information about the polarities between Taurus and Scorpio. So Scorpio is you know, where the sun is um, for the next month and uh, the full moon is happening in Taurus. So these are polarities. And uh, for those of you that uh, know about uh, astrology, then you understand that. But I thought I would just bring in a chart. Um, and this is the chart of the new moon and it's from Astro Seek. Um, it's a great place to have your chart done or to look at what's happening currently in astrology. And you can also do something called the transit chart, uh, which means that you have your birth chart and then you uh, it shows what transits are happening currently. So, you know, what dynamics are at play for you more on a personal level. Um, but yeah, they're a wonderful resource for you. So uh, so I, I thought I would share this just to show the dynamic between the full moon in Taurus and the sun and actually Mercury and Mars in Scorpio. So it's quite a lot of energy happening in Scorpio when we're looking at um, the, we call them personal planets. So we have the sun, the moon, um, uh, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, and these are all closer to the Earth, and so they tend to, they move generally faster than some of the other um, planets, and so they tend to uh, reflect uh, more of what can be happening in our life and influences, so I thought that I would just highlight that as well, so um, just because we're talking about, you know, anything, um, of course, with the sun, anything that the sun is in is always shining a light on that. Um, and Mercury uh, is all about communication. Um, and so, you know, when we're looking at in Scorpio, Scorpio is our, uh, it has to do with interpersonal dynamics. Both, I was thinking about this just before I started, <laughs> Um, as I'm trying to control my my schedule and my life and everything, and, and both Scorpio and Taurus are about control. <laughs> um, so uh, we're looking at, um, you know, control from a Taurus perspective. Um, well, you know, I'm going to bring it back to these these dynamics. But yeah, so we have um, more, more material. What's, you know, I think about Taurus is the second astrological house. So when we're looking at our 12 houses, we're looking at one uh, framework is to look at these 12 houses as 12 periods or stages of our life. And so the second house is, I always think about, um, I don't know, when my little, uh, my little brother or my little sister was, you know, around two or three, and it was like, mine, <laughs> everything's mine, it's mine. And you hear kids, and that is just, you know, that's like the, it shows what Taurus is mine. I want this. And so it's when we start to understand that we are separate uh, from our mothers and our fathers and we become an individual. And therefore, then we also say, oh, OK, not only am I individual, but I want this and this is mine. And so we start to understand possessiveness um, and materials. And uh, and so, uh, you know, and on the other hand, when we're looking at the, the Scorpio, Scorpio has to do with really other people's money <laughs> or other people's resources. And so that can be, you know, uh, loans or always like taxes, um, uh, mortgages, those kinds of things. Uh, the, and, and the tie-in also inherent to inheritances so you know when we're looking at um are we going to inherit something well have we been good <laughs> you know and that kind of control that may play out in that type of dynamic and that's um or are we you know have we said no you're not going to control me 
and I don't want anything from you, you know? So there's, it's just a lot of different dynamics that have a lot of potential here. So when the moon is really, you know, shining a light on this Taurus energy while the sign is shining a light on Scorpio, it can often, um, you know, highlight conflicts um, or, um, you know, yeah, like when I say conflicts, not necessarily, even though Taurus can be the bull that's banging up against someone or something, um, but it can be just something that is like ready for change. Um, and the, the full moon often means culmination. So I'm just going to actually back up a little bit to, you know, we're looking at this eclipse, uh, cycle. And so uh, the eclipse cycle, this particular eclipse cycle this year, it's like, it, you know, often you can look at, well, what happened, what was happening for you? What did you initiate or what was something that you were starting in March around that time, March, April, um, and then what's happening with that now is it coming to kind of fruition or is it ending or so oftentimes this represents endings or letting go um so uh with that full moon and when we're looking at taurus it may be in this particular dynamic it may be you know maybe it's letting go of um you know possessions or or even possessing someone um a relationship or or um you know, different financial stuff, for sure, both of these houses re relate to, I mean, you can think of, or Taurus as the second house, relates to our financial security, and Scorpio relates to, you know, um, yeah, our access to uh, funds for building our lives and the interdependence that can come with that. So I just wanted to share some of those things with you. Not sure what's happening in everybody else's life. Um, I'm just going to check the chat and I'll, I'll just go back to the moon as well. Um, um, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. I'm not sure what you're laughing at, but I appreciate the, the, the laugh. <laughs> so yeah, just again to go, I'm just going to take another look if there was anything else I wanted to share about this, um, this chart. I think I'm just going to let it alone and we'll, we'll, um, do what we came here for and I forgot I always forget to introduce myself so my name is Linda Marlene Eels and I've been running these group sessions now for quite a few years um, just actually even before COVID um, it was kind of funny because I did this what I referred to at that time was a visionary session on January 1st um, the year that COVID began, but the visionary session, it was interesting that, you know, here we are doing this group session online and, um, and then we ended up all of us moving online. So, uh, so that's been a few years. I mean, I've been doing group sessions since 2012. I think I began in person in, uh, Toronto, um, or like with people and then someone asked me so to, uh, to start doing them online. So thanks for everyone for joining. And yes, I am a body talk practitioner. Um, just really want to stop sharing my screen there. There we are. And uh, I've been practicing body talk since 2004, started part-time and then moved into full-time and have a few other modalities that I draw from. And I'm certainly a lifelong learner. I would imagine most of us here are and always studying and learning and, um, and hopefully integrating. So I'm just going to uh, laughing at control. Oh, <laughs> Sherry's laughing at control. Control is so interesting. So just again, looking at that Scorpio energy. So Scorpio uh, from, from Dr. John Veltheim, the body talk system perspective, uh, he correlates each of the 12 houses and signs with a different meridian. And Scorpio energy is correlated with the kidney, um, kidney meridians. And so kidney is also about control, fear, control, survival, um, ancestral chi and energy. And, you know, why, you know, why do we want to control things? Uh, you know, I often correlate that with fear. Uh, so uh, we're either trying to control ourselves, control our responses, inhibitions, um, because we have insecurities or dis or trust stuff going on. You know, kidney and trust is very 
uh, tied in together. And then also, um, uh, you know, we, or we may want to be controlling our environment and those in it. And there are many means of doing that. And so, you know, it's the fear um, that often makes us want to control. There can be other factors as well, but um, because it's, I don't know what's going to happen. So I want to control things or there's an uncertainty. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there can be beliefs about that in history. It can go way back to early childhood and beyond uh, ancestrally or even past lives, if that is something that uh, you're open to. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's, I try to be gentle with myself when I turn into a control freak. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because, uh, you know, I always think, well, I'm not a control freak, but sometimes I can just sense my tension in my body and how um, I'm responding to things and trying to, you know, I, I feel the tightness happen. And, and that is often indicative of control and fear. And one of the areas, there's a, a muscle in our shoulders, a deeper muscle that is, um, ruled by the kidney meridian. And I find this an interesting thing. You know, we talk about stress. Um, I'm so stressed. We use stress as a term instead of actually using, calling it the emotions that it is associated to, right? So if I'm stressed about deadlines, what's really happening? Um, maybe I'm afraid of not making a deadline and I'm afraid of what's going to happen if I don't make that deadline. So you know, the underlying um, emotions with stress and how that can actually show up, say, in your shoulders or even in your spine, spinal column. Um, so, yeah, if you'd like to go into a few deep breaths and I'm going to uh, get ready to do this session. And um, you're welcome to... Um, focus on or bring a focus for you to the session you you can chat that in or you can just bring it into your mind's eye of something that you feel um you know not necessarily based on the introduction i've given on our our overarching theme but just really what what you'd like to um uh, see a positive change uh in and open to more possibilities so um when you start taking deep breaths, you can just really invite your breath to uh, areas that you may be holding tension or discomfort or pain. And just allowing the release of that breath to draw deep within that area and, and that release to kind of start to pull it out and feel your body letting go. Okay, so I'm just going to use um, Mindscape. I'm going to go into my Mindscape to focus on the group. So um, I, I always use Mindscape in these group sessions and we it's like there's this uh, there's space that has really been created. Sometimes we'll go somewhere else, but uh, the space that's been created for this group session, and um, that's what's coming in. Um, it's so interesting because um, Jupiter um, shows up. So in this space, for those that haven't actually um, uh, done this session with me before in my mindscape, it's like really almost like... Um, you know, uh, an open air space where we're just able to look at all the stars and planets. And, uh, and, and so, as I said, J Jupiter shows up very large. So Jupiter is the large planet. It's a very expansive planet. Um, and uh, it's often a planet associated with good luck. We can all use that. Um, good fortune and um, our aspirations. Uh, it also relates to travel and um, 
uh, and, and a higher learning. So a higher learning, certainly, you know, in a formal level, but also just uh, higher learning, uh, expanding our horizons, our philosophy, our understanding of uh, humankind. So that's, uh, that's an energy that's coming in, in some way to inform the first part of our session, or maybe the whole session. Now I'm going to invite the group energy in. And so the group energy comes in um, really as a, a blooming flower. And so it's continuing to grow. So there's a real movement uh, to our group energy and I'm going to start the session now. Okay, so we do have a uh, another uh, theme uh, coming up and um, this relationship dynamics. and uh, control. Okay, so linking into your heart and at the metaphysical uh, energetic level. And when I link into your heart, it's, um, there's this uh, quality of, of uh, awareness, an expansion. Um, what's coming up is an expansion of awareness and it is self-awareness. Um, And then uh, further in the heart, um, just really going into uh, more of the chakra aspect of the heart and going into a sub chakra balancing. So in body talk, um, we'll look at the seven main chakras individually, but then we'll look at them um, as contained within each chakra. So the, all the qualities of each chakra are uh, of the seven chakras are in each chakra. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a balancing on uh, the sub chakras within your heart chakra. So there's something a little bit more specific here. And what is coming up is the um, sexual or sacral chakra. And more specifically within that, um, or a definition should I say is self esteem. And self-esteem, and there's this little satellite that comes in to the time of development of the sexual chakra, which is seven to 14 years old. So that, that time period is going through puberty, starting to really form relationships and um, also starting to have that uh, sexual expression. So and how that could potentially influence that self-esteem development for you personally. So in a way it's, it's like a getting a sense that it's like an active memory balancing in a way, by going through the perspective of the, the chakras. And this is still happening within your heart chakra. Um, so it's to, it's to balance that those qualities of self-esteem and it to further influence one, that awareness, that self-awareness, and also the other qualities of the heart chakra, self-love, self-respect, respect of others. Um, so that's the first aspect. And then linking into the power uh, or solar plexus chakra aspect. And this, um, this is like, 
it has to do with your confidence, but it's very much about your ex, like your outward self-expression, like who you are to the world. So, and confidence. And um, when I go into that, there's this little, um, self-doubt uh, that comes up within this and there's um so this is coming up uh like a satellite um and it's a uh, it's part of the thalamus which is I, i'm sure i've mentioned this before it's an area in your brain um it's like a big sensory input area and it really holds a lot of your beliefs and attitudes. It's like a filter in a way. So sort of, you know, you th think every, you know, we're all experiencing the world our own way. And so this is a filter for our own way. And this area that I'm going into, I remember taking a prama class years ago with uh, Dr. Nancy Warner and she called it the doubting Thomas area. <laughs> And so it's the air, that's the area that's coming in here is, um, and it's like I'm seeing this sort of flash on and off uh, to do some balancing in relation to this outward self-expression within this power chakra balancing, but really, you know, from the heart. So your self-expression through your heart and the confidence of who you are. And so this self-doubt, and it's like, that creeps in there. Um, okay. So how I'm seeing this is like a scale in a way. Um, in the one, on the one hand, you can look at skepticism. Like we, you know, there's another term that comes up, a healthy dose of skepticism, right? So we can't believe everything. We'll be gullible. You know, we're, that's when we can become um, imbalance because we're too over believing. Right. But so a healthy dose of doubt, which another way of putting that is skepticism. Um, so that we're not overly gullible, but, but that we're still, you know, able to, uh, able to question and critically think about things to our benefit. So it really is serving us in a more of a level of discernment as opposed to a pathology of excess doubt. So that's how this is coming into balance is really helping to balance the, the aspect of discernment um, within this, uh, within this thalamus three area. Okay. So that's um, just going to see or ask if there's anything else in that. So I'm going to parcel that first part of the formula up. And, um, and then we're going to link and uh, we're linking back to, as a whole, to the sacral chakra, the sexual chakra. Okay. And what comes up here is um, the creative expression. Um, yeah, so it's a yeah, creative expression so you know, when we think about sexuality um it's it's how life is created right it's very interesting you know like that it is cr the creative force um is it how life is ex uh, I'm, I'm actually don't want to limit life being created from sexuality I don't know why that's coming in, but anyway, but it's one way. So through uh, sexuality, the energy of sexuality, it, 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 Kundalini energy. I don't know if many of you are familiar with Kundalini, but it's an incredibly creative force um, when it's activated and can really enhance our personal creativity and healing creativity. So it's that quality that's coming in here is to um, really highlight and bring forth that creativity and creative expression. It's even more so to creative self-expression. Sarah. Uh, and so, um, so I'm going to parcel that whole first part, but there's more in this and it's actually, I'm going into a permissions balancing. 
at all levels. So permissions, um, there's something that has been a resistance in some way and it's ready to shift. And I'm just going to determine what that is. So it's, I, I give myself permission to heal and grow spiritually. So that is the, the permissions balance and that is the statement. And so within this is a satellite as a resource satellite of Scorpio, um, Scorpio energy. And so the other aspect, I mean, many aspects of Scorpio is a very it's seeking truth. So Scorpio loves to seek the truth and will you know really keep questioning keep at something to um to really get to the truth and so this kind of energy and it's like not anybody else's truth this is about your truth in this permission to heal and grow spiritually um so as a resource to continue to help that process for you is that very uh, focused, uh, penetrating energy of Scorpio. Okay, so the permissions is coming up to be grounded in your medial prefrontal cortex. And um, and we're actually going to tap this formula. It's interesting because usually a, I would say a permission comes up at the beginning, but it's it's coming up now. So I'm going to tap this out um, as a heart chakra to uh, the sexual chakra. So if you'd like to join me in hand placements, you can place one hand over your heart and the other hand just uh, underneath your navel and take deep breaths and we're going to tap this out. So you can tap or not tap. Um, it's completely up to you. Nice deep breaths is always helpful as we do this balancing. So the overarching theme of that was relationship dynamics. Um, interestingly, it really brought us into um, our relationship with ourselves initially. So um, balancing first that expansion of self-awareness in your heart um, and then going into balancing the um, uh, sexual chakra and the quality of self-esteem to the self-confidence quality again within your heart um, and within that uh, self-confidence, that power chakra aspect, doing a satellite session on the thalamus, the self-doubt area to move that into more balance in skepticism for discernment. And then linking into linking that into your sexual chakra for uh, balancing your creative self-expression. And then finally going into, and you can say this aloud if you'd like this permission balancing, I give myself permission to heal and grow spiritually. And the energy of Scorpio um, in that quest for truth coming in as a resource satellite for that last balancing. I give myself permission 
to heal and grow spiritually. Okay, so just tapping uh, visually back into my mindscape and so my flower power group uh, group <laughs> session, it's like the flower is now glowing and uh, Jupiter's decided to swap out, uh, be swapped out by Mars. So I don't know if this is uh, specific to this, but, you know, Mars is in Scorpio and that that's a... Uh, a happy place for Mars <laughs> because Mars is very energetic and intense. Um, and so complements the, the Pluto energy of Scorpio as well. Yeah. So it's also, it can be aggressive. Um, and it certainly is the warrior planet. So often can represent divisiveness and conflict. Um, I don't know why I was thinking about this. I think about a lot of things. It's um, so conflict, you know, conflict is such an opportunity for growth. So it can be very destructive, but it can also, um, you know, if, if we choose to look at conflict as a learning opportunity, and I am not necessarily talking about more macro global conflict, um, uh, but more of our own, in our personal lives and um, that it's, it's so frequently a catalyst um, for insight. And uh, often we can get stuck or caught up in a blame uh, game situation where you know, we're holding blame or anger towards someone. And one of the indicators for me is when I think or hear, Oh, this, they did this to me, or this is happening to me. I can't believe this happened to me. I can't believe you're doing this to me. And as soon as we start to use that language, it's, it can indicate that we're sort of, we're seeing ourselves as helpless. And often we are sort of taking a victim stance within a given situation. So language for me is a real indicator of what, you know, what we believe about a certain circumstance, that we're powerless, that we're giving our power away, that life is sort of getting to us. And so I'm just bringing this in because, you know, with that Mars energy coming in, when I have, when I get angry at someone, um, I'm, I, I'm really working at not over controlling, but just working at self-awareness in that. Okay, so first of all, am I overreacting on what belief may be, you know, shined, uh, having a light shined on? And also, you know, well, do I do what this person is doing to me? And often I have. So it's the shadow um, aspect. And this is very much sort of the Scorpio energy, right? Understanding that the things that I really dislike in others are often an aspect of myself that I dislike or that I need to do some balancing on. So those are just some of my personal insights. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily true, but just things that, uh, that have been helpful to me. So let's see what, what Mars wants to do in this uh, next part of our session. Okay. And, um, I don't want to forget about the chat, so I'm just going to take a look. The moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. <laughs> okay, exactly. When the moon hits your eye. Okay. So Mars. Okay. So, so far, it's just an energy that's informing. It's not an item or anything like that. Um, But it's certainly an energy, right? Like Mars is all about energizing. Um, it's the warrior. That's the archetypal uh, energy of it. So maybe there's something that needs to be energized. Uh, 
Okay. It's kind of interesting. Now I understand. It's like, so it, it's literally coming up on a, the left side and it's very specific that this is the left side. So, um, and this is coming up at the yin level. So what is coming up for energizing is, is the yin. And first it's coming up as a more of a macro yin, as in, you know, what's yin, right? Well, yin is the opposite of yang. Mars tends to, well, it is. It's very yang, outward, um, you know, moving, aggressive energy, whereas yin is more receptive, um, internal, moving towards the core energy. But what actually is coming up for being activated with that Mars energy is the yin, is that feminine energy. And so it's to activate um, and to energize the, the yin energy in your body. So that's the first uh, priority. And I may get more specific in that. No, it just wants to come up as like an overall and even oh, coming into, uh, into your Wei Qi, um, into the yin aspect of the Wei Qi. I don't, I've, I've never really looked at the yin, yang, feminine, masculine balance of the Wei Qi, which is your protective energy. In a way, it's like an intelligent energy in that, um, you know, it, it, it knows your boundaries. It, it, it's to help you discern what is good and what is not good and to protect you. It's, it's so I say that it's like, it's a sort of beyond our mind, intelligent energy. And so when I'm thinking about this sort of receptivity of this yin energy, it's like there is this receptivity um, within our Wei Qi um however maybe it's excess you know maybe we're picking up too much stuff maybe we're too em emotional or uh too empathetic and yeah that's what it is so there's this consciousness balancing of of empathy it's an uh it's actually a natural consciousness balancing of empathy in relation to this wei qi and to help to yet yeah, balance and energize and strengthen. Um, oh yeah. So when I say this natural consciousness of empathy, it, as it relates to yin energy and as the beliefs we have about what is feminine energy. Um, so it's even helped like the priorities to balance that empathy from that more like feminine perspective, you know, not female, but feminine, what, you know, the caregivers, the, all those kind of archetypes that can create over-involvement or over-attachment, um, excess emotional, uh, like picking up other people's emotions, all of that. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I just want to tap in again and see if there's anything else that is coming up with this. Yeah. So at more of a practical level, we're going into a body chemistry balancing. It relates to this in some way. So it's a natural consciousness of empathy and then going to a body chemistry. So for those of you that have done this before, you can, um, I actually don't have any tissue in front of me, but you can do a little saliva sample if your hands clean from underneath your tongue into your navel. So we just, I want to do a read of what's happening at a body chemistry level using your saliva to do that. And uh, we're going into allergies. Okay. So I guess, we, you know, we're, we are going through a change of season. We're kind of coming up more on the end of it in um, the Northern Hemisphere. In my area, it's been it's unseasonably warm, so we still have stuff going on. But then in the Southern Hemisphere, um, moving more into summer, so that can be a season. But I'm not sure that that's the allergy per se. So let's, um, it's this, an allergy is a strong reaction, right? It's uh, some kind of, at a physical level, certainly, but also it can um, really relate to emotional reactivity, emotional memories that express themselves in our chemistry and inflammation. So 
I'm just going to tap into what this is. It's orienting to So it's orienting to, it's an allergy to judgmental people. So for you, whatever that means for you, um, like people that are judgmental and yeah, whatever that means for you. And so it wants to come in and balancing through that body chemistry so that there's like some kind of like you know immune system reactivity and potential defense mechanism to this that's coming up and it's defined by anger and anger is often pardon me associated with allergies um, not always anger, but often it is. So that's what's coming up is this um, this reactivity. And so one of the things that can happen with our Wei Qi, our protective energy, is that when we're holding anger um, about certain types of people or towards people, it can weaken our protective energy, our boundaries. So this is maybe why this is coming up in this uh, in this area. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that's coming up is a group matrix. Um, um, so I'm just going to see if it's our group as a whole. No, so it's actually a group matrix for you. And I'm just going to determine what this is. So it's a family matrix balancing its ancestral. So we're doing an ancestral family balancing. So what this can mean is helping to reconnect you um, to your ancestral family. You know, when we think about, for me, the easiest way to think about this is that while I'm here, and how many people didn't make it? Like over generations and generations and generations, so many people didn't make it, but I made it. So the strength of that that came through my ancestry to allow me to be here and to allow my family and ancestry and your family to adapt to hardships and changes. And so the strength of that, so what we're doing, the priority is to actually reconnect you, um, strengthen that bond to your uh, family energy. And it's coming up through your heart. And I thought it was going to be both sides of the family, but what's coming up in particular is the maternal side of your family. So um, connecting you in to your mother's family. That's where the um, balancing is happening here maternal ancestral family. Yeah. And there's this definition of adaptability. Okay, so we're going to tap this last formula in. Um, so we began with um, the Mars energy uh, really linking into the Wei Qi. I'm just actually uh, going to ask if you'd like to place your hand just over your, your solar plexus, um, just at the, the upper rib cage area, please. And deep breaths, and I'm going to tap this in. So 
So balancing that yin, energizing, pardon me, energizing that yin energy within your body from that, uh, that very energizing, uh, aggressive type of energy from Mars. And then also doing this natural consciousness balancing of empathy. So really um, helping to shed uh, limitations or uh, distortions of what em empathy is for you like over attachment or involvement or emotional pickup stuff and how that's been impacting the Wei Qi and then linking into doing that balancing on um, that physiological chemical response to judgmental people and the emotion of anger. And then finally linking into uh, a reconnection of into your maternal um, ancestral family um, and as it relates to your adaptability. So I, I you know, I'm smiling because no matter what the theme is, um, we, you know, we have our certain group here, but we also have many others that are, are going to be listening in at another time that I'm tapping into because they're part of our group matrix. And it's like, I'd love to say that we're going to stay on theme, but it just rarely happens that way, does it? <laughs> because it's always about what's happening for our group. So that's our session for today. And, um, yeah, I will do another session in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to continue doing these every few weeks unless just something happens in life that I can't, but I so enjoy them. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining me. And uh, and who knows, maybe you'll get to see that, uh, that partial eclipse on Saturday. Um, and I look forward to uh, seeing you again in a few weeks. Thank you. Yep, you're so, uh, you're so very welcome. Bye for now.